Speaking of the Great Lakes, Lake Michigan got stirred up today. Reported in Lake Michigan, east of Sturgeon Bay. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, Cracks beneath the waters of Lake Michigan have long been a source of fascination for geologists, but nothing in recent history compares to what the United States Geological Survey, USGS, has reportedly uncovered. The agency issued a red alert, the highest possible warning level in its geological risk assessment scale, after satellite imaging, sonar mapping, and deep seismic readings detected a series of massive fissures forming beneath the lake bed. This discovery has ignited alarm within scientific circles, as well as deep curiosity about what could be brewing beneath one of North America's largest freshwater bodies. Before we start, hit the like and subscribe buttons for more exclusive news. At first glance, Lake Michigan appears calm, its surface stretching endlessly under the sky, its waves rolling gently over the shorelines of Illinois, Wisconsin, Indiana, and Michigan. But beneath that serene expanse, the Earth tells a different story. USGS sensors placed along the lake floor began transmitting data that suggested subtle but progressive shifts in the crustal structure, a creeping movement in the rock layers that typically only occurs near tectonic boundaries. What startled researchers was not just the size of the cracks, but the speed with which they appeared to be growing. Early measurements showed fractures extending for several miles along the lake's central basin, with smaller branch fissures radiating outward like veins. These cracks were not the result of surface erosion or seasonal freeze-thaw cycles. Rather, they originated deep within the bedrock. When seismic imaging confirmed the pattern, USGS geophysicists realized they were witnessing something far more significant than sediment collapse. The formations bore resemblance to tectonic rifts, zones where the Earth's crust begins to split and stretch due to deep geodynamic forces. To understand why this is so extraordinary, one must first appreciate that the Midwest, geologically speaking, is supposed to be stable. It lies far from the active fault lines of the Pacific Rim or the volatile zones near the Appalachian region. The bedrock beneath Lake Michigan belongs to what scientists call the North American Craton, one of the oldest and most stable portions of the continent. For cracks of this magnitude to appear here suggests that ancient forces, dormant for millions of years, might be stirring once again. Instrument readings collected by USGS field teams in coordination with university researchers indicated subtle shifts in magnetic and gravitational anomalies beneath the lake bed. These shifts corresponded with rising gas emissions, mostly methane and carbon dioxide, emanating from small vents along the fissure lines. Such gas releases often accompany deep crustal fracturing or magma movement in volcanic regions. Yet Lake Michigan is not known for volcanic activity the anomaly challenged conventional understanding. A red alert from the USGS is no small matter. It typically signifies a high probability of geological instability that could pose risks to human populations, infrastructure, or ecosystems. In this case, the warning was not about an immediate catastrophe, but about the potential chain reactions that could follow if the cracks continue to expand. The Midwest relies heavily on Lake Michigan for drinking water, commerce, and recreation. A disruption in the lake's geological foundation could have consequences reaching far beyond the scientific community. Researchers began analyzing the possible causes. Some theories pointed to deep-seated stress along the mid-continent rift system, a billion-year-old scar running through the Great Lakes region. Though inactive for eons, this ancient rift could still harbor weaknesses in the crust susceptible to modern tectonic pressures. Others speculated that climate change, and the associated fluctuation in lake levels and groundwater pressure might be accelerating the natural movement of fault zones hidden beneath layers of sediment. One of the most striking discoveries came from sonar imaging conducted by a research vessel operating out of Milwaukee. The equipment mapped undulating ridges and collapsed zones across parts of the lake floor, resembling the topography seen in young rift valleys. Scientists were astonished to find that the largest crack extended over 15 miles in length, descending hundreds of feet into the bedrock. The structure appeared to be widening at a measurable rate, with micro seismic tremors detected every few hours. These tremors were too small to be felt on land, but significant enough to suggest ongoing movement below. The implications for hydrology were immediate. If the cracks intersect aquifers or underground reservoirs, 
They could alter the flow of groundwater or cause seepage of minerals and gases into the lake. Even a slight chemical shift in the lake's composition could affect aquatic ecosystems, particularly sensitive species like trout and whitefish that depend on precise water chemistry. Environmental scientists began modeling scenarios where methane seeps could lead to oxygen depletion zones, triggering fish die-offs or algal blooms. Meanwhile, the engineering community expressed concern over the Chicago-Milwaukee Coastal Corridor, where major infrastructure, from pipelines to power stations, rests within reach of Lake Michigan's edge. Though the cracks lie beneath deep water, the redistribution of pressure along the lake bed could, in theory, translate into ground deformation closer to shore. Minor shifts in foundation soils or bedrock could threaten bridges, tunnels, and other structures designed under the assumption of geological stability. Satellite interferometry, a technique that measures ground deformation with millimeter precision, confirmed that subtle uplifts were occurring along parts of the western lake margin. These uplifts, though small, aligned with the general direction of the fissure system below. Scientists debated whether the deformation was due to isostatic rebound, the gradual rising of land once compressed by ancient glaciers, or whether it indicated new tectonic tension. The timing, coinciding with the sudden crack formation, suggested the latter. Geologists delved deeper into the question of why this was happening now. One hypothesis centered on post-glacial rebound acceleration. Since the last ice age, the Great Lakes region has been slowly rebounding upward as the weight of long melted glaciers releases its hold on the crust. For centuries, this rebound has been gentle and predictable, but modern measurements show it may be accelerating due to shifts in Earth's mass distribution, potentially linked to climate-driven polar ice melt. If the crust beneath Lake Michigan is rising unevenly, tension could accumulate and fracture the brittle bedrock, leading to the massive cracks now observed. Other scientists look toward the possibility of deep mantle anomalies, zones of upwelling heat that, while not volcanic in nature, could weaken the lower crust. Data from regional gravity surveys revealed a faint but consistent low-density anomaly beneath the Great Lakes Basin, implying that warm, buoyant material might be intruding upward, though not hot enough to melt rock. Such intrusions can cause stress accumulation over vast areas. The prospect of a nascent rift system reawakening beneath one of the largest freshwater lakes in the world captured both awe and apprehension. If these cracks represent the early stages of a rifting event, the consequences could reshape the geology of the entire Midwest over millennia. While such changes unfold slowly on a human timescale, the short-term effects, such as increased seismicity, gas release, and hydrogeological alteration could manifest within years or even months. In laboratories across the United States, teams began modeling stress propagation through digital simulations. Using data collected from the lake's seismic stations, they recreated the stress fields and fracture patterns under controlled conditions. The models showed that continued extension at current rates could lead to a chain reaction of fractures, potentially linking separate fault zones under the lake into a larger network. The resulting system could act as a conduit for fluid migration between deep crustal layers and the lake bed surface. Environmental specialists worried about what that could mean for water contamination. Even trace amounts of heavy metals or gases released from deep strata could pose long-term risks to the lake's water quality. Given that millions of residents in Chicago and other cities depend on Lake Michigan's water intake systems, any change in subsurface chemistry could demand massive infrastructure adaptation. Water treatment plants designed to handle biological contaminants are not equipped for mineralized or gas-rich inflows from geological sources. Public reaction to the USGS Red Alert was immediate and intense. News outlets picked up the story, amplifying the sense of urgency surrounding the discovery. Coastal communities demanded reassurance, while policymakers convened emergency briefings with geological experts. The federal government moved quickly to allocate additional monitoring resources, deploying new seismographs and satellite-linked buoys to track the progression of the cracks in real time. Yet, despite heightened awareness, much of what lies beneath Lake Michigan remains unknown. The lake's vast depth and frigid conditions make direct exploration extraordinarily difficult. Submersible drones equipped with high-resolution cameras captured glimpses of the fissures, dark, yawning chasms cutting through ancient rock, 
but much of the system still eludes observation. Every new scan seems to reveal additional branches, suggesting the network of cracks is more extensive than anyone initially thought. From an ecological perspective, the development raised both challenges and opportunities. Geologists noted that cracks in the lake bed could create new habitats for microorganisms adapted to high-pressure environments. Chemosynthetic bacteria, which feed on methane and other gases seeping from below, could colonize these fissures, forming the base of a unique subsurface ecosystem. However, such ecosystems often come at the expense of oxygen-dependent species higher up the food chain, potentially reshaping the lake's biological balance. As researchers work to understand the structural dynamics, seismologists recorded an increase in microquakes across the region. Though imperceptible to humans, these tremors were concentrated near the central basin, the very area where the largest cracks had been mapped. The frequency and pattern of these events mirrored those observed in pre-rift zones elsewhere on Earth, such as in East Africa's Great Rift Valley or Iceland's divergent boundaries. The correlation deepened speculation that the Midwest might be entering a subtle phase of continental stretching. The idea of the Earth's crust stretching beneath the heartland of America challenges deeply held assumptions about continental geology. For decades, textbooks described the interior of North America as a tectonically quiet zone, buffered from major seismic hazards. But the new data suggests that quiet does not mean inactive. Beneath its stillness, the continent may be slowly reorganizing itself, and Lake Michigan sits at the center of that reawakening. As more data poured in, attention turned to historical records. Geological archives from the 1800s and early 1900s documented mysterious tremors occasionally felt around the Great Lakes, long dismissed as isolated phenomena. Some of those tremors, when plotted on modern maps, aligned roughly with the newly detected fissure zones. This raised the possibility that the system had been intermittently active for centuries, only now becoming noticeable due to advanced instrumentation. The Red Alert also had major implications for energy policy and engineering. Companies involved in offshore wind development and underlake pipelines were urged to pause operations until further risk assessments could be completed. Engineers expressed particular concern about how shifting strata could stress buried infrastructure. Even small ground displacements could compromise seals, joints, or foundations, leading to leaks or failures. Insurance agencies began re-evaluating coverage policies for shoreline industries. While earthquakes in the region are rare, the potential for ground movement beneath a massive freshwater body introduced new categories of risk. Municipal planners started discussing reinforcement of coastal defenses and reassessment of zoning laws, especially for areas close to potential deformation zones. Amid the growing concern, geochemists collected samples of lake sediment near the cracks. Analysis revealed elevated concentrations of rare earth elements, sulfur compounds, and trace gases, materials usually found in regions of deep crustal activity. Some researchers suggested that the lake bed might be interacting with deeper hydrothermal systems, possibly connected to the ancient rift's buried magma intrusions. If verified, this would redefine geological maps of the Great Lakes Basin, adding a new layer of complexity to the region's subterranean dynamics. Satellite thermal scans provided yet another surprise, faint but measurable heat signatures rising from the fissure zones. The temperature differentials were minimal, just a few degrees above the surrounding sediment, but persistent over several weeks. That consistent thermal output hinted at an ongoing process rather than a one-time event. Whether caused by frictional heat from rock movement or by deep fluid circulation remains under investigation, but either explanation suggests active geodynamic change. For geophysicists, the discovery offered an unprecedented opportunity to study intraplate tectonics, the subtle movements that occur far from plate boundaries. Lake Michigan, once considered geologically placid, has become a natural laboratory for understanding how continents evolve internally. The cracks could reveal how old scars in the crust respond to modern stresses, shedding light on continental stability and the long-term future of North America's landmass. The social dimension of the discovery was no less complex. Indigenous communities around the Great Lakes, whose oral traditions describe the land and water as living entities, interpreted the event through a spiritual lens. Elders recalled stories of the sleeping earth beneath the lakes, 
a being that, when stirred, reshaped the world above. To them, the cracks were not merely geological features, but messages, reminders of the delicate balance between humanity and the planet. While scientists focus on empirical data, the broader public grapples with emotional responses, fear, curiosity, even awe. The idea that the ground beneath one of the most iconic lakes in America could split open evokes a primal reminder of nature's power. News coverage alternated between alarm and wonder, emphasizing the scientific mystery and the potential consequences in equal measure. At the USGS headquarters, teams worked around the clock to refine their models. They compiled real-time seismic data, satellite readings, and hydroacoustic measurements to predict how the fissures might evolve. One of the central questions was whether the cracks would stabilize or continue to grow. If they stabilized, the region might enter a new equilibrium, with the fissures remaining as permanent geological features. But if they expanded, new hazards could emerge, potentially altering the shape of the lake itself over long timescales. Even without catastrophic outcomes, the presence of such large-scale fractures challenges how we understand the interaction between surface water and the solid Earth. Lakes, especially those as massive as Michigan, exert immense weight on the crust beneath them. If that crust is weakening, the relationship between water load and geological stability becomes a feedback loop. Rising and falling lake levels due to climate variability could accelerate deformation, causing the cracks to widen further. Researchers have begun examining the sediment layers for signs of ancient analogs, evidence of similar events in the distant past. Preliminary findings suggest that around 600 million years ago, the region may have experienced comparable crustal stress during the breakup of ancient supercontinents. Those earlier fractures eventually sealed, but the remnants still influence the modern stress field. The current activity might simply be the Earth's way of relieving long accumulated tension, a geological sigh after eons of silence. Public policy discussions have increasingly incorporated the USGS findings. State governments bordering the lake are coordinating on contingency plans for potential geological impacts. Emergency preparedness agencies have been briefed on how to respond if increased seismicity affects water infrastructure or transportation networks. Universities across the region are expanding geoscience programs to train the next generation of experts who will monitor and interpret these developments. Beneath the glassy expanse of Lake Michigan, the deeper layers of the Earth continue their imperceptible struggle between tension and release. Scientists stationed along the shoreline remain fixated on the constant hum of monitoring instruments, aware that each tiny vibration might reveal something new about the subterranean movements. Recent readings have shown fluctuations in the electromagnetic field surrounding the lake basin, suggesting that the rock formations below are undergoing continued strain. These minute electrical changes often precede more significant geological adjustments, offering subtle but crucial clues about what might come next. At a research facility near Grand Haven, specialists in crustal dynamics are experimenting with predictive algorithms designed to anticipate how these cracks could evolve over the next few decades. By integrating satellite gravimetry with underwater sonar data, they are attempting to map stress transfer along invisible subsurface lines. Early models show that the fractures might influence groundwater flow patterns across the entire Great Lakes watershed, potentially altering underground drainage networks that feed smaller lakes and wetlands hundreds of miles away. On the ecological front, limnologists are beginning to record unanticipated thermal variations within the lake's lower strata. These faint temperature shifts could change the distribution of nutrients and oxygen subtly transforming the living conditions for countless aquatic species. Even the sediment cores being pulled from the depths tell a quiet but compelling story. Layers of fine silt now interspersed with new mineral compositions, evidence that the crust is breathing and exhaling through unseen vents. In the stillness of the lake, every grain, bubble, and ripple becomes part of a grand, ongoing conversation between water, rock, and time itself. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, could you leave your comments below and tell us, what are your thoughts on the red alert beneath Lake Michigan? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.